Uh, Vanessa again. Okay, I'm going to try and do some lessons now in a, in a bit of a sequence rather than just take random things. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open my EQ Stitch program. And the very first thing I'm going to do is go to File, Preferences, and then Restore. And if you click on Restore, Default Settings, it will go back to the default settings for the program. And you don't lose anything that you've saved before, but this way we'll all have the same screen to start with. Once you've pressed Restore Default, it will, uh, it will tell you it's going to close down the program and you have to reopen it again. Okay, so I've already done that, so now I'm going to click Close. Now you can see I've got my um, window open. The actual program itself has picked what you're going to see down here, across the top, etc. One of the things that really bugs me with programs is they have hidden features. And sometimes it takes forever to find them if you're following a video. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this line and customize my toolbar. So I click on it. Button size, I like mine large. It says add and remove buttons. I'm going to click on that. Now, in this menu, you'll see all the things here that have already been by default added to your toolbar. But I like to see everything. So I'm going to make sure everything is ticked. And as you can see on that top bar, things are being added. If you click on there, you'll make sure there's no other things selected. OK, so I'm just going to click off. Now, now we've got all these things across the top. And they will appear when I'm on specific menus that allow me to use those things. The same thing applies down the bottom. Now, remember, at the moment, I'm just on the quilt tab up the top here. And I'm on layer one. I should have mentioned that before. And then if you click down the bottom here, customize toolbar here, again, button size is large, button style 3D, add and remove buttons. And there's still more buttons here that allow you to use. So I'm going to again select everything. That way I have got them here on my toolbar. Now remember you can move this toolbar and take it away from the actual bar at the side. So if you don't want to have them all down the side or you haven't got room all down the side, you can actually move this toolbar around. Move it back over to the side and you'll see it'll jump back. Well, it will do if my computer will let me do it. Okay, I've got it back there. Now, a lot of these things at the bottom, like Spray EQ 4, etc., you probably won't use. But they're there, they're not hidden. Now, if I go on to Work on Block, which is the yellow button, we get more tools down the side here. And again, check to see if there's anything else that you haven't got selected. In this case, we're right. We're fine to go. Have a look at the image, which is this camera for importing an image, etc. Again, click on it. Add and remove buttons. You've got everything. You're ready to go. And the last one is EQ Stitch. Again, I'm going to click on there. Add and remove buttons. Oh, I've got other things here. I've got brush stroke, rectangle, eclipse, and I've got text all down that side. So I've checked them all. Now, across the top, you should be fine. All those should be ready, ready to go. Another thing that can get frustrating is if you want to select a shape. Sometimes, and my computer is as good as any, it Sometimes it opens up, sometimes it doesn't. So I can actually grab that and pull it onto the work area. But I've got to get it out first. And as I said, my computer, because I use a Wacom tablet, it gets a bit temperamental. 
and you'll find the same thing too if you have a click right on it sometimes it gets it sometimes it doesn't I got it quick grab it <laughs> put it over to the side you don't lose it then it's still on this side but it's also now as a separate so if you want any of these shapes they're all there again with this one the polygon sometimes it does it sometimes it doesn't I get really frustrated with this part of the program come on Got it. And again, I can move that into my workspace. Now I've cut the screen screen size down so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, go to Stitch. No work available. Okay, trace image. You can bring in an image up here. Import an image. It can be a photo. It can be. Uh, JPEGs, it can be all sorts of things. If you go to the image files drop down menu, here's your options you've got bitmaps, GIFs, JPEG, PNG, and TIFF files. Uh, JPEG, I find, is okay to use these. So I'm just going to go back and see if I can find some simple image files. Okay, so these are some simple image files, and I actually will put these files onto my Yahoo group. So if you want to practice or use them, you're welcome to do that. So as you can see, there's a few images for you to play with. This is an easy one to play with. I've clicked it. Now I'm, I can crop the image. I can leave the image as I want. I can select the areas to crop with the up and down buttons here, the top, etc. I can also do the um, width and the height. Now this really bugs me as well because I can never remember what I'm supposed to be in when I'm in pixels, what size these pixels relate to. So I prefer to do it in either inches or millimeters. So for this exercise, we're going to do it in inches. If you want to reset it back, again, you hit the reset button. If you want to make that image darker, or lighter, that's where you change it. I figure if you leave it at halfway, you're halfway there. And I'll click OK. Now I have to bring that image onto my workspace. OK, if you're planning to use patch draw tools to trace this image, it is recommended that you turn off autofill. Would you like to turn off autofill now? I'm just going to say no. And now I have my image on my work table. Now you'll see that this is 50 by 50 with the zero in the center. That's because that's how my graph is set up. If you want to change that, you need to change the ruler on your worktop. Okay, I've now gone to my drawing board and hoop setup. And I'm default it went to to FAF. I'm going to do it to PE Design. I can actually do a hoop myself. So I've actually done a custom hoop, which is 100 by 100. But I'm going to set this back to what it was before 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters. Snap grid, change colors if you want to. Decide whether you want small grid spots or you want large grid spots. You also need how many spots you want in the grid. 
tolerance area I don't worry about that display if I want to change this display I can change the colors again not a problem graph paper number of graph paper divisions the number of cells and the number of cells you can only do 2 to 48 so I'm just going to go in there and change that to 24 whoops artwork options snap to grid snap while patch whole patch to grid snap to node of drawing and auto snap aligned segments that's the only one I'm going to check at the moment leave that 200 join and fill options auto join when drawing auto fill when patches close yes to both of those freehand default settings better fit looser fit fewer nodes more nodes depends what you want to use at the moment I'm just going to leave it as the default and again these are going to be the default as well now that's just showing the eclipse fault, um, fault default settings that's the pi arc we'll just leave it on that one at the moment stroke default minimum width is one contour then you've got all these fancy ways of drawing leave it on that one at the moment and the end cap again is going to be the same minimum width is one and boldness three I'm going to change that to two and the boldness four machine applique any newly drawn machine applique patch is a design is filled automatically with the stitch settings so the edge style is zigzag I don't particularly want that so I'm going to make it an E stitch width is 4 I'm going to make that 3 density is 4 tack down distance is 1 stitching inside is 75 and the E stitch setting center length percentage 75 I'm going to leave those as embroidery edge stitching you've got a steel stitch you've got no edge run stitch bean stitch double stitch I'll leave it on that edge length edge width and edge density I'm just gonna for the moment gonna leave it on there if I'm using a run stitch then I'm gonna make this 2.5 okay we'll just leave that as a steel stitch at the moment edge underlay settings parallel underlay length I'll just leave those as they are at the moment embroidery fill settings smooth okay you got all these to choose from I would leave it on smooth you can always change it fill angle is zero not keen on that one I'm going to make my fill, fill angle just 30 and the density is 4 if you have a fill angle of 100 degrees or 45 degrees or 90 degrees they're not really conducive to work with so I'm just going to say so at least it gives me a bit of a slant but it doesn't put it on the cross crane of the fabric and it doesn't put it on the up and down part of the fabric if you're square in your hoop okay fill underlay settings I'm going to leave as perpendicular underlay length and all that I'm just going to leave for the is to make it the same and click OK so all those settings are actually now in there if you want to trace this image you can do that just check that everything that you want on there is there yep so that's how my image is appearing on my work area I can move it off there I can move it back on there I can center it I can do all sorts of things with this but there's the positions relative to the block so that's roughly in the center okay so let's go to artwork this is where your tools come in and you can pick I have a digitizing tablet I use a graphic tablet 
because I can't for the life of me get my mouse to move where I want it to move. You have straight tools, you have bezier curves, you have freehand, and you've got brush strokes, plus you've got shapes, and your text, plus your other shapes in here as well. So if I'm using my Graphire tablet, or my digitizing tablet, then I can just literally use it, I've got to anchor it, use it like a pen. If I bring that back, it automatically closes it up and gives me my shape. A bit dodgy around this area, but if I click on that, there you can see the nodes, and each node, by default, will be on this setting. Right, so I need to change it to this one. Make a node a corner. That way I can use these and change them individually. So I can move this area without affecting this area. The same as on this one. So if I click on that, again, it's set so that it's not where I want it to be. I can move that. I can double click and I can insert a node. Now if you're working with these nodes, you really need to be in an area close up to see what you're doing. So as you can see, that's moving that part of that drawing out, but it's not adjusting this. So if you move that right out there, you'll get a bump there because you've not altered this one as well. So if you want to do various things, you can actually make nodes symmetrical. So the whatever you do on this side, it's going to do it on that side. Now these tools you really need to play with. This one as you can see, is not. I I I keep away from this one. It annoys me because I don't, it never does what I wanted to do. So I tend to use this one more than anything. It allows me to move these nodes around. Now you can also see that that's part of the line that I'm moving. If I want to select that node doesn't let me do anything. If I select this node, this becomes active, which means I've broken those apart. So if you just want to move those, or you want to actually delete this, if you click on it, edit, nothing's showing. You need to make sure that you're on the right line. Now delete, break, smooth, cusp or symmetry. So if I do delete, I deleted that node. If I click on this node and delete, then I can then select that node, bring it back down here, curve it to where I actually want it on that line inside here, grab that one, bring it over the top and now your shape is filled. If these don't appear, you're, in, you're not where you want to be. Believe me, ask me how I know. The best thing to do is to zoom back out again and just play with this image and watch what each one of these does. So if I draw a straight line, there's my straight line. If I do another straight line from that, and then do another straight line to there, and it fills, these have automatically connected. You can select it, and you can right click and delete it. I'll delete that one while I'm at it. You can right click and clear, which is delete. This one gives you curve. 
And as you can see, as you move that, see how that's moving. I'm taking my If I want to, I can right click and I can rotate. And I can rotate by whatever I want. So I normally will do it if I'm just messing about like this. Okay, now that went clockwise. Click again, rotate. Put a minus in front of that. Or better still, type it in up here. Minus 20, enter. Doesn't do it. That's because I'm in the wrong place. Whip, twit.